Hello, and welcome to UPL Insights, a new digital media series from UPL led by our friends and experts across the African continent. This series will bring together leaders in sustainable farming, food systems, and climate resilience to explore the challenges and developments defining world agriculture today. We are recording this episode ahead of the African Green Revolution Forum, the biggest annual agriculture event for Africa, which is now marking 20 years of AGRA's mission to transform agriculture. This year, the AGRF Summit is a virtual event, and we have been talking to some of the people leading that transformation inside and outside of UPL and exploring our shared commitment to resilience, trade, nourishment, and sustainable productivity. Today, we're talking about fall army worm, also referred to as FAW, which is a highly destructive pest that is having a severe impact on the livelihoods of millions of smallholder farmers around the world, as well as the communities they produce food for. Fall army worm attacked over 80 plant species, causing considerable damage to the staple food crop, maize, along with rice, sorghum, as well as the other vegetable crops and cotton. Follami worm is native to the Americas, but has now spread to Africa and Asia, and analysts anticipate that it will soon be present in Southern Europe. Since it was first reported in Africa in 2016, Follami worm has spread to 44 countries across the continent. Based on the UN Food and Agriculture Organization's 2018 estimates, up to 17.7 .7 million tons of maize could be lost annually to fall army worm on the continent, enough to feed tens of millions of people. Chemical control remains the most commonly used method to control the fall army worm. However, this often has a limited effect whilst exposing the farmer to hazardous pesticides. UPL has entered into an exclusive distribution agreement with Agbitec to enable farmers across Africa to access Foligen, a naturally occurring biological tool which can suppress fall army worm without causing damage to other beneficial insect species or the environment. With self-replicating properties, the farmer gets season-long control with fewer applications. This represents a significant opportunity for small local farmers as well as large growers to ensure safe and effective integrated pest management. FAO estimates $4.6 billion economic loss, potential impact of fall army worm per year at farmer level. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Ivan Romushana from CABI, who has played an indispensable role in the testing and evaluation of foliagen in both Kenya and South Sudan. And also by Dr. Sashi Gurumayan, who is the Africa and South Asia lead for Agbitech. Gentlemen, you're both welcome to UPL Insights. Thank you for joining us today. I'm uh, very much keen to understand how Polygen came to be developed and uh, what the distribution of this new tool could mean for farmers across Africa. But before we enter into uh, that conversation, Dr. Ivan, can you tell us a bit more on what is fall army worm exactly yes, and uh, um, what have been the damages uh, in Africa caused by this pest? A fall army worm is an invasive pest uh, if you are a scientist, you would call it Spodoptera fujipeda. We call it an invasive pest because it is not native to Africa. It invaded from the Americas. And what normally happens when you get invasive pests is that they don't have natural enemies in the environment that can suppress their population. So they come, they invade the continent, and they just spread unabated. And over time, because there is no natural enemy to keep them in check, they become highly damaging. Uh, the pest has spread to nearly all, all most of Africa. It is known from most of Sub-Saharan Africa. The only region where it's not yet reported are a few countries in North Africa. It mostly attacks maize, sorghum, and a few other cereals, causing serious economic losses. Uh, Kabi has done a study that estimated that up to $2 billion could be lost at a minimum due to fall armyworm annually every season. Uh, Every season, more than 80 to 90% of farmers report 
for long has a problem in their fields. It damages uh, their crops significantly. And farmers are forced to cop. And the way they cop is spraying pesticides. They go to agro dealers and procure any kind of pesticide they can land their hands on to spray this pest. Uh, consequently, uh, you find that lots of pesticides get dumped into the environment. Farmers use pesticides that are registered to for worm, and as a result, significant uh, human health impacts can occur and also damage the environment, affecting bees, pollinators, and other beneficial insects. Uh, the pest is with us to stay. Since it invaded Africa, it has been spreading. It is not going anywhere. And as a continent, we need to brace ourselves and come up with solutions that we can use to mitigate against the pest that is here to stay. Thank you so much, Dr. Ivan. And uh, we understand that the damages are, are even more uh, preoccupating that uh, this is attacking uh, staple food crops, actually. Can you uh, elaborate a bit more on uh, how does it attack uh, the field? How does it appear uh, actually in the fields? Well, in a typical field, the pests normally start attacking when the maize is still young. Uh, normally, by the time you get three leaves on a maize plant, uh, you can start getting early cases of the pests. It starts by laying eggs on these young maize crops. And when those eggs hatch, each adult lays up to around 200 eggs. And when they hatch, they turn into larvae that then move from one plant to another. So they get suspended on tiny, tiny strings called silts, and they are blown by wind to one, from one plant to another. And in a short period of time, they have spread, spread quite widely in the field. So you can imagine that one for amawam female can lay 200 eggs, and each of those turns into a larvae. So you have 200 larvae moving out in the field consuming maize. And so that's how they spread. And uh, after a period of time, they, of course, they hatch into pupae and, uh, and then into adults. They go to mate. And after mating, they come back and lay more eggs. And so you'll find that in a season, you'll have several generations of the fall annual coming to attack your maize and feeding on your crop. Uh, previously, farmers thought that the pest only attacks the maize leaves. But we do know that it's not only a, a, a pest of the, of the, of the leaves. The reason why farmers think it's most leaves is that because when you go to the field and you see a maize field that is eaten by fallen worm, the damage to the leaves is so massive. So you could think it's only leaves, but the most damage that the fallen worm causes is the damage on the corpse. Because the larvae move to the corpse, they eat the grain. And so if you would be harvesting uh, maybe 3.8 or 4 tons per hectare, if the fallen worm is causing losses of about uh, 20 to 35 percent, you're pretty much harvesting around 30 tons per year. So you're making quite a significant loss as a farmer. So that's how bad this pest can be. I see. Thank you for those details. So uh, very uh, fast reproduction rate and uh, very serious threat to uh, the African crops. Um, so how do they deal with that? Uh, what are the current protection pro, pro, what are the current protection methods uh, that the farmers uh, currently use the first solution that farmers normally come up with is use of pesticides uh, they are, are caught up in a problem and they need to come up with a solution to deal with immediately so the first item they pick for they go for is use of pesticides sometimes uh, highly hazardous pesticides we found cases where farmers use WHO class 1A, class 1B, and class 2 pesticides that are really, really harmful pesticides to the environment and to humans. So that's normally the first approach. But they also become disparate, and you'll find farmers going to the field and hand picking the larvae and crushing them. Farmers have tried all kinds of things like ash. They make mixtures from ash, from soil, and putting it, put it in the funnel. Uh, most of these don't work as effective as they should be, but that's what farmers are doing because they're disparate. Uh, farmers also try to plant early and avoid uh, staggered planting to prevent or to reduce the impact of this pest that when by the time it attacks the crop, it has pretty much almost escaped that most damaging stage. But there are also other solutions that researchers come up with, like push-pull technology, uh, like use of um, conservation practices, conservation agriculture to conserve natural enemies. And uh, more recently, there's a new trend towards use of biopesticides which is uh, a longer, a more sustainable and more effective way of sustainably managing all Right. 
So let me turn on now to uh, Sashi, uh, who has been uh, leading on the development work and uh, the launch of the Foligen uh, technology, uh, which is an alternative uh, biocontrol solution to uh, full army worm. Sashi, uh, can you uh, explain us uh, what is new about Foligen? Sure, Florent, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And Ivan, good to be connected again here. Um, so, Phylogen is a biological control for fall armyworm. And, you know, the best way to describe it is every caterpillar of any species has naturally co-evolved with its own virus. And what happens in nature is when you have a very high density, very high population of caterpillars, and let's say there's scarcity of food, then there would be a natural outbreak of its own virus, a zootic effect, which would then control the population of that caterpillar of that species. And what we're trying to do is harvest that natural caterpillar, formulate it into a product with water, with glycerol, and then, you know, enable farmers to spray it like they would normally spray a crop protection product, which then leads to the, the virus being ingested by the caterpillars. And when the virus is ingested, the caterpillar inside the caterpillar, it recognizes that it's its host caterpillar and thereby starts multiplying. And that in effect kills the caterpillar, enabling us to control folamiworm. So folamiworm phalogen is a composition of the folamiworm specific baculovirus um, that we have produced in our uh, production site. Right, right, right. So it seems like a slightly different mode of action as uh, what we see in general as the as the conventional uh, crop protection yes. products for 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 for, for worm. Uh, how how exactly is this mode of action uh, different? Work? So yeah. um, you know, this vector virus uh, particles exist as um, DNA strands inside protein crystals, uh, which is essentially uh, what we are harvesting from uh, the caterpillars at our production site, from the dead caterpillars at our production site. Those particles uh, called occlusion bodies are formulated into phalogen. We then, um, you know, when farmers apply phalogen, the uh, and the cater and the caterpillars ingest the occlusion bodies. What happens in the in the stomach, in the gut of the caterpillars, is that uh, because of the alkaline nature. Uh, inside, the protein crystals break down, releasing the DNA strands, and they recognize the host uh, caterpillars, and they attach to the cells, to the cell walls, and they start multiplying. Effectively, each caterpillar then turns into an individual factory, and that helps us to control um, the population over a longer period of time. It takes a little while to, to, you know, to see that the caterpillars have slowed down and they eventually die, but the, the effect is multiplied because each, in, in, you know, each caterpillar that has ingested a virus becomes a factory on its own right. And the interesting thing here is Folami worm is cannibalistic. So the stronger ones, the un, unaffected stronger ones will go after the weaker, the ones that have ingested the virus and now beginning to show symptoms of infection. And in the process, uh, you know, when they attack the, the weaker ones, they get infected. And in doing so, you know, we are multiplying or nature is helping us multiply this virus in the environment. Just uh, like I said before, the virus is specific to the caterpillar. So the fall armyworm virus will not affect a corn earworm uh, caterpillar, for example. So it is designed by nature to only affect full army worm. Right. So you're basically using uh, nature's uh, science and um, uh, nature's uh, intelligence to uh, to incorporate these methods as uh, an integrated pest management uh, uh, control. Uh, so um, we can see that it's quite an innovative and, and smart way of, uh, of controlling this, this full army worm. But so now we want to know if it's effective. And uh, to, to, to ask that, maybe we, we go back to uh, Dr. Ivan and ask him uh, 
what were the results on the field uh, as uh, he is the researcher who has been testing the technology uh, in Kenya and South Sudan and can uh, better attest uh, from uh, an outside point of view uh, on the efficacy. Dr. Uh, Ivan, what were the results uh, on the field of uh, the Foligen technology? We tested Foligen initially in Kenya uh, in field okay. plots to understand its efficacy in terms of dealing with fallen worm. And from our results, we found that fields that were treated with fallogen performed much better in terms of uh, infestation and also in terms of yield compared to the fields that were treated, that were untreated. And the results were comparable to what was treated with uh, one of the recommended pesticides uh, in Kenya. Uh, we then went ahead and did some work as well in South Sudan to now take it out to the farmers because sometimes what you see on, on the research field may not be replicated in the field. And so I want to demonstrate to farmers that this technology can actually work. And so we did uh, it, uh, try in South Sudan, evaluating this product with a number of farmers uh, to test the product and also get their feedback on what they think about the product. And uh, from the end, at the end of the season, our results showed that uh, farmers who applied phylogen got a 63% yield gain compared to those who did not use the product. And if we try to quantify this in terms of, uh, of, of actual, actual quantity of product, it was estimated up to around 0 0.81 tons was, was obtained. And so you can imagine if you use the product, you got 0 0.81 tons above uh, a farm who did not use the product. We also did a survey after that to understand farmers' perceptions of the product. And we found that 63% of the farmers thought that the product was successful and amazingly, 95% of the farmers were willing to buy phylogen if it was available at an agro dealer, agro dealer near them, which we found quite impressive because it's sometimes hard to change farmers' perceptions about products. But to get a such high percent of number of number of farmers willing to buy the product if it was available, I think demonstrates that this is a good product and delivers delivers advantages over those who don't use the same technology. Right. So. Can we, in a nutshell, say that uh, the efficacy of foligen is similar to a conventional agrochemical products to control for army worm? There's, there's a varied performance in, depending on which agrochemical you're talking about. Different products show different performances. And so it would not be correct to say that uh, the product is equal, equivalent to all the, all the products that are available on the market. But I would say that uh, uh, phylogen is comparable to some of the pesticides that are currently available on the market. Right. But certainly with a uh, much better uh, environmental footprint. So, um, uh, yes, Sashi, if, you, if, you, if you add yeah. if you add those other benefits, you know, when you're looking at, at uh, the benefits of using a product, if you look at one angle only, then you don't get the full picture. But if you now add on the multiple benefits, in terms of less reduction in 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 in, um, in contamination of of, of 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 foods, reduction in health concerns of those who are spraying the product, reduction in killing of uh, natural enemies and pollinators and beneficial beneficial insects that would you know offer that multiple benefits to the environment. Then, if you look at all that in totality, then you can confidently say that use of phylogen outshines and outbeats some of the better uh, some of the chemical products that are being used for control of the pests. Right, right, you said. So I, I was going to ask Sashi on uh, what uh, can he say exactly about the, the overall benefits of, of the foliage and I mean uh, on top of uh, controlling full army worm and um, uh, being a technology uh, that is smart and uh, innovative and that uh, can be integrated in uh, integrated pest management. Uh, what are the benefits uh, of, of, of using Foligen for the farmer? Thank you, Flo. Um, you know, if I may just add one more point to what Ivan said about uh, the, the performance in South Sudan, we also looked at the, the return on investment based on the existing, the current price of maize in South Sudan. And, and the farmers we worked with, I think on average, got a few hundred percent return on investment. If mm. you know, if you think in terms of the cost of actually applying phylogen, the work that was that went into applying phylogen and so on, and then the gain in yield, if you translate that into 
the the current price of maize and so that's a very that's a very important point this is a positive sure. return on investment for the farmer now when it comes to the environment we're talking about a product that is naturally occurring what we've done is scale the the production formulated it into a product that you can you know transport you can ship around the world and apply in the same way that you would apply a traditional uh, crop protection product and that makes it easier to use at scale now because of the fact that this is a naturally occurring product it is non-toxic it is non-hazardous um, and and in terms of its environmental footprint if you think about you know vecular viruses you spray it and we recommend uh, phylogen to be sprayed at sundown because eventually with um, UV exposure and temperature and exposure to high temperature it will degrade it will you know dissipate in nature and therefore it leaves no footprint in that sense and in terms of um, you know our environment the environment in which our farmers work with limited access to personal protective equipment and so on here is a product that takes away a lot of the hazard and hazardous and toxic nature of uh, chemical pesticides. Um, I think that's one of the, the advantages out of many that phylogen offers or baculoviruses in general offers. Right, and I also like the um, self-replication uh, abilities of, uh, of, <laughs> of this technology because it seems that uh, with one application only, um, once the virus uh, gets into the nature and uh, and populates um, the, the the fauna, uh, it can remain in the field uh, for a longer period. That's right. So you know, like what happens is each individual caterpillar that has ingested the virus, a few particles of the occlusion bodies that we have sprayed on the crop, they become individual factories and and as they die they liquefy and any other caterpillar healthy caterpillar munching on the leaves that have been sort of covered in the in the liquid from a dead caterpillar we get infected of course uh, like ivan said folambiworm is an extremely mobile pest and you will always have new pests coming in from the neighbor's plot or you know new moths laying eggs and turning uh, eggs turning uh, hatching into larvae and therefore you do need to top it up but the the important thing to recognize is that this is a self replicating um, control um, which also offers an added advantage to the farmers absolutely also to make the point that uh, following one is cannibalistic and so even those yeah. caterpillars that have died because of the virus are fed on mm -hmm. by others and so subsequently the virus just keeps spreading in the field. Yeah, yeah. And, and the worms keep contaminating uh, themselves. That's yeah. right. Right. So um, now the, the, the following question obviously is um, when and, and how can we make that technology uh, available to uh, the biggest portion of uh, smallholder farmers uh, in Africa, because uh, we are recording this episode for uh, the African Green Revolution Forum, and uh, such uh, innovative technologies are very much uh, answer to uh, today's challenges of uh, building um, healthier, more resilient uh, food system and, and cropping methods. So um, maybe before building on uh, Dr. Ivan's question on uh, that the farmers were asking uh, where, where can they find this technology uh, in, the, in, the, in the shop nearby, um, I think it's important to have a uh, collaboration with uh, uh, big institutions and I, I would like you, uh, Sashi or, or Dr. Ivan, to explain us a bit on uh, the collaboration we've had with the FAO in, in South Sudan in that regard. That's right. So South Sudan is, you know, is a young country and, you know, a few years back they were faced with the, the challenge of, you know, fall army worm infestation and managing that infestation. And as USAID, the Ministry of Agriculture of the Republic of South Sudan and um, FAO were looking for, you know, options to support the farmers that they work with 
Um, they looked at a range of options and they felt that Polygen, which at the time had already been tested, evaluated in multiple countries. So uh, in, East, in East Africa, we have worked with uh, Kabi uh, in Kenya, as well as with CALRO, which is the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization. But in the same way, we had also worked in Senegal with um, CIRAD, the French research organization that is widely present across West Africa and IITA in Nigeria and also in Southern Africa in Zambia, we'd worked with the Zambia Agricultural Research Institute. So we had all these data points to, to back up, um, you know, the fact that uh, Foligen works in the in, in the African agroecological environment. So on, the, on that basis, we started a, a small pilot in 2018-19 um, where we were targeting about 500 farmers. Um, and remember, you know, a lot of the, the maize in South Sudan currently is imported into the country. So FAO is working to reduce um, food you know, well, dependency on imported food, imported grains, and and develop food security in the in the country through the World Food Program, and that because of the the fact you know that the results came out quite strongly, we have scaled it, targeting thousands, so four to five thousand farmers in the current season. Um, as part of rolling this out to farmers, we are also working hard to make sure that this is available. Uh, through the private retail network. And that's something that we're working on in parallel to see how quickly we can build that up in South Sudan. But as you are aware, you know, with the, the, the strategic partnership that we have with UPL in covering most of Sub-Saharan Africa, we are expecting that the product will be registered um, very soon. We've finished registration trials in Kenya, Zambia, um, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, um, a, mul a multitude of countries, put it that way. Um, and, you know, over the next six to 12 months, we're expecting that registrations will be granted and we'll be able to take this product to market. Right. Yeah, of course, I guess at some point you need to rely on a uh, private uh, partner to make your, your product available uh, up country and to the, to, to the biggest portion of farmers. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, um, what does this partnership with UPL entails and, and why did you should choose this partner for uh, the distribution of Foligen in Africa? Um, obviously, UPL is, is one of the largest players in the industry and, and uh, we are delighted to be working together. Um, the initial discussions actually started with um, Arista, as you are aware, and Arista has a very strong uh, biologicals portfolio, which UPL has now um, uh, inherited, and that is advantageous because it's a biological product. It's different. There is a slight, you know, this. There are slight nuances that you know that uh, you have to think about when using a biological product versus a, a, a conventional chemical crop protection product, and and that means you know more training, more engagement with farmers or extension agents, more partners on the ground, more national institutions to work alongside with, and so on. And I think you know UPL in Sub-Saharan Africa presents that, and and I believe together we can actually get this product in whatever shape, size. Uh, and form to smallholder farmers across the continent um, in ensuring that they are um, they have access to this product and that it is available when they are looking for it and that when they finally do have access and that it's available they can afford it and that is a critical point. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, we are coming to uh, the end of our discussion. I'm just left with uh, uh, my uh, thank you uh, to, uh, to both of you, Dr. Ivan and uh, Dr. Sashi, for your contribution and for, for joining us today on UPL Insights. Uh, to find out more about UPL work on Foligen, you can click the link in the description of this video, and you can also subscribe to this channel to follow our full series for the AGRF Forum. Thank you very much.